<laughs> it's Gregory, the human alarm clock. Oh, I missed you, too. You're going to wake up your sister, you. No, I won't. She's already gone. Come here, you. Uh, <sighs> How are you? Good. Yeah? Mm -hmm. You got big. You know what? what? I got bigger, taller than Oklahoma. You did? I think you did. I think you're absolutely right, because, you know, when you left, you were about this tall. And now, <laughs> let's see, you're uh, this tall. <laughs> Mom said you had a bug in your tummy. You feeling better now? Mm-hmm. Well, that's good, because, you know, if you have a bug in your tummy, sometimes you have to go to the tickle doctor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 you want to show Daddy all the neat stuff you brought home from Aunt Emma? Yeah, come on, Dad. I'll come show you in my room. Now, ready? You go yeah. ahead, and I'll be right there, okay? Oh, I guess you could have used another hour after your big night last night. No, I had to get up anyway. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just, uh... And Josie. In fact, I'm going to give her a call at work. Full-fledged cop. Been up for hours, I'll bet you. You know, you, uh, you did a really good job on that surveillance last night. What do you mean, I was parking after the party? Yeah. I guess you do your best work undercover. Yeah, it was fun. Until we heard about Ryan. Yeah. Hey, listen, can you give me a hand on this? Oh, yeah. It's been a long time since I've had to wear one of those. Yeah, well, I guess that's the thing about being a rookie. You never lost a friend before. Or a captain. Josie. Yeah. Look at me. You know something where Ryan is right now? It doesn't hurt anymore. Yeah. I guess I need an explanation for this. Okay. Get your hands off me, young man. Mr. Sedinsky, we just have to check if your liver is swollen. I hear she has magic hands. Dr. Evans, we need your magic hands over here. Yeah, well, what's the problem here? Possible cirrhosis and a DOM. DOM? Dirty old man. Good luck, you two. Okay, let's take a look at this liver. Lay it on me, Doc. <laughs> How long have you been drinking? Fifty years. Let's hit the bars later and celebrate, huh, beautiful? <laughs> Possible <laughs> acute cirrhosis. Take him upstairs to the lab for you. Okay. I'm Jerome? Sending, I'm sending him upstairs for LFTs, BUN, and creatine, and the social worker. You're two for two. Dr. Bur Burkholz is just bragging about your impressive diagnostic oh, skills. Oh, lepemphagus. Aw, oh, shucks, doctor. That was nothing. You taught me everything I know. Is that right? Well, almost everything. Wish I had known how to save Ryan Harrison's life. Yeah, me too. Excuse me. Where can I find Dr. Winthrop and Dr. Evans? Speaking. Oh, terrific. You are hereby notified that you are being named as defendants in a civil lawsuit, Lori Michaels versus Bay City General, in the wrongful death of her minor son.
Can you tell me where Lorna Devon's office is? Find it yourself. Fine. Since it was so easy to find you too. I think I'm gonna be sick. I feel better. At least we have the papers we know what we're up against, right? What if I lose my license to practice medicine? You're not gonna lose anything. You didn't do anything wrong. This whole thing's gonna blow over. I keep trying to picture what it would be like not being a doctor. You know, if it gets that far. I picture my whole career going down the tubes. What am I gonna tell my mom? Courtney, it's a good thing you're way ahead of reality, you know that? Uh, Oh, she started saving for med school as soon as I won my first science fair. She's really proud of me. I'm scared, Morgan. What's going on? This isn't just about your mother, is it? Are you, are you scared about what your boyfriend's gonna do? Well, what is Andrew it? can't find out about this. Why not? I got an early Christmas present. Join the club. Well, the games have officially begun. Is this where we get fed to the lions? Oh, don't panic, Courtney, okay? This thing has to play itself out, but we can control the outcome. But I'm telling you, don't say anything under any circumstances to any members of the press or to anyone else for that matter. Bottom line here, don't trust anyone. Not even each other? Rachel, I can explain everything well, that happened. It's time for you to go home. I need to talk to my granddaughter in private. Rachel, anything you want now, to do? Now, Dumas. I'm sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about, Dumas. I'll see you later. Yeah. Rachel, it's not what it looks like. It's exactly what it looks like. You're stretching the boundaries. I love him, Rachel. Fine. But there's certain behavior that is not acceptable in this household. No problem. That's why they invented cars. Taking that tone with me on this issue is a big mistake, Maggie. That's the way it is, Rachel. Not here it isn't. Look, you have been gone all summer and a lot of things have happened. Now, nobody has been playing the parent. You walk back in and boom, I'm supposed to be a kid again, so you feel like you didn't miss out on anything? Lily, I missed out on a lot. Yeah, well, I'm sorry being a wacko took up so much of your time. Maggie, that's not like you. I'm sorry. It just came out. Look, you treat me like a kid. It makes me angry. Yes, I understand that. I really do. But I'm still responsible for you. And we haven't had a heart-to-heart -heart in a long time. I guess it's time for another one, huh? Forget it. I cannot forget this, Maggie. What I mean, Rachel, is if this is your lecture on the birds and the bees, you are way too late. What's this? Glim report, Justine Kirkland, Lieutenant. Yeah, good stuff. Blood and fiber samples positively ID'd all over the place. Well, that's great. Where? Northbound train tracks. Uh, just at the county line. God, what a way to go, you know. Yeah. Hey, look, did uh, forensics find anything out about that button, that men's coat button? Thing? Oh, Manny says that the lab oh, yeah, is backed, backed up, up till doomsday. doomsday. <laughs> I know, the guy's like a broken record. Well, he says he's working on it and he's gonna let us know. Okay, good. Well, you know, that's doomsday for him, so I'm going to go ahead and call him and uh, see if I can show him what ASAP means. Good luck. Thanks. Uh, may I help you? Excuse me. Hey. Uh, may I help you? What are you doing at uh, Harrison's desk, huh? And who are you? I'm nobody. I'm not even here. Not officially. Hey, wait a minute, buddy. I'm talking to you. Hey! Hey! i got to have you sign this requisition. The genetic fingerprints. DA is breathing fire. Yeah, well, what else is new? It's that kind of day. Will I have to testify in court? If I get fired because of this lawsuit, will I be able to practice medicine whoa, in whoa, any whoa, other whoa. state? Courtney, you can calm down, okay? Look, when John gets here, we will have a powwow with a hospital lawyer. But in the meantime, pull yourself together, all right? Getting summoned is a picnic compared to getting cross-examined by Cass Winthrop. Believe me. I would know. Don't tell me. Hey, it's the truth. And where you guys are concerned, I'm not dishing out anything but. Let's uh, save the sugar coating for the press. Your brother's really going to lay into me, isn't Courtney, he? Well, maybe I can talk to you. Don't forget it. I've got, I've got patience. Thank you. 
Oh, Lorna, hi. Wow, you look pretty great, Mother, but you got really care. bad timing. I've got to go. Oh, wait a minute. I, I brought you something to eat. I know how upset you were last night. Mm. Yeah. Can you uh, make the shooting never happen? Can you do that? I wish I could. Huh? But I don't have time to cry over chocolate brioche. No, I've got to get on to the next crisis. What? What's happening? Tell me. I remember I told you about Lori Michaels. You know, the mother whose son died. Well, yeah. she's finally done it. She's filed suit today. Against John? It's against every doctor who's in ER that day. Oh, that's awful. Mother, you're still not wearing your wedding rings. I just, I forgot to put it on, that's all. All right, tell me, what can I do for you? How about calling off your business partner? Excuse me? You know, your associate, Cass Winthrop, your best friend. Oh, he's the lawyer who's filed suit. Yeah, Donna, tell Vicky it's okay Hello, to Lori? Yeah, it's, it's okay, Cass Winthrop. Uh, hold on, I have another call coming in. Well, the process uh, service should be delivering the papers hey! to the as we speak. Oh, it's, and then it's we'll just be crazy around here. And I, I'm actually on the there. other line. Great. I'll try uh, the give me a couple minutes, you know, okay? Right? And don't worry, Great. I'm on the case. I'm back. I'm doing my homework. Yeah, listen, tell Vicky anything Very I lovely. can do and give her my love. I'll be by to see you okay. later, okay? I'll talk to you soon. Right, bye. bye bye. How, How are you? can I say? I, I keep waiting for the phone to ring, and it'll be Ryan, and he'll want me to help him on a case or send him good vibes. No, you can still do that. Yeah, I know. I feel his presence everywhere. But I sure wish I could bring him back to Vicky. Yeah. That would beat your tuna surprise casserole, wouldn't it? Yeah. This is just so intense. Losing Ryan right after the baby. It's been tough for you, I know. Cass, I really wish you weren't working on Lori's case. I thought that you said you were going to back me up on this. I am. I will. But it, it's just... I took this case because I know it's the right thing to do, but it's going to be rough. I'm really going to need your support. I'll always be there for you, Cass. You know that. And... If you want my PI services pro bono... Just knowing that you're in my corner right now is all that I need. That plus the occasional use of your phone. Hey, no charge. But from a professional standpoint, I want you to stay out of it. I don't want you to risk your relationships with the people that are important in your life. We've got that covered for both of us. Doctor? Thank you. Hey. Oh, could be. It's probably Diane. She said she'd give Gregory a ride to school. Gregory, get a move on! Hello, Dr. John Hudson, please. Oh, I know what this is. Pleasure doing business with you, sir. Well, I sure didn't waste any time. The, uh, the hospital is being sued. When did this happen? While you were visiting Emma. Why didn't you tell me? Come on, Rachel. I thought you'd be cool about this. This isn't about being cool, Maggie. You are my responsibility as long as you live in this house. And if you were going to make this monumental decision, you should have been brave enough to talk to me about it. Rachel, we love each other. What's the big deal? Maggie, love is a very, very big deal. And the fact that you can even say that to me indicates to me that you are not ready for a relationship like this. Says who? Says somebody a lot wiser than you. If you want to go on living here... You have to come under our rules of conduct. Lieutenant Sinclair. Mrs. Hutchins? Come on in. Thank you. Is this an official visit? Well, I do need to ask you a couple more questions. Only if it's absolutely necessary, Lieutenant. Well, I'm afraid it is, sir. Why are you subjecting my wife to this? Well, sir, your wife is the only eyewitness we have to what happened at that train depot. Yes. Now, I know you're tired yes. of seeing my face around, sir. But I need to verify what happened, the circumstances leading up to Ryan's death. But she's already told you before, she remembers nothing. Yes, I'm aware of her uh, memory lapse. I just thought I could jog a couple details. Look, my wife has lived through a nightmare. 
doesn't, she has the bruising to show for it. It doesn't matter what I've been through. What my husband is going through is so much worse. Listen. It, this doesn't help, Lieutenant. I understand. This has been painful for all of us. Now, the department doesn't like losing one of its most decorated officers. I believe that Captain Harrison would want to see justice served in this case. Well, I know Captain Harrison would wish to spare his family Darling. any unnecessary aggravation. Darling. All right. If you're comfortable with it, come on, let's get on with it. Thank you. <clears throat> Mrs. Hutchins, uh, have you ever taught to fire a handgun? Yes. Why? Did you have one with you on the night in question at any time? No. What are you saying? What about in your car? You think you, uh... I don't own a gun. Why would I be carrying a gun? What exactly are you saying? When you took off to uh, chase Justine Kirkland, did you think about protecting yourself at all? Of course all? not. I was just trying to keep up with her so that you guys could catch up to me and get her. And what about Justine? Do you think she had a handgun? I don't know. You don't okay. remember. Do you remember having an altercation with her of any I kind? I don't remember anything. You don't remember having to defend yourself? I don't you, re remember you remember anything. nothing? You're going to have to come back. I want to help the police. I really do. If you want to help me, then why don't you let me take you back to the crime scene? It might jog your memory. No, I, I'd rather you not do that, darling. I have to, don't I? All right. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry about Ryan, you know. I keep thinking if only he hadn't gone back on the force or if I could have persuaded him to stay my partner. Thank you, wait. Or... You can't change what happened. You can only go on. Yeah, I know. So come on, Charlene. Tell me about your trip. Oh, it was great. It was just wonderful. I had such a good time with Gregory and Emmett, too. Uh, yeah, some of the stories she was telling him. <laughs> Oh, I see. No, no. Oh, it's so good to hear you laugh again. Oh, me and my laugh. Yeah, we got reacquainted over the summer. We did. Oh. Hold on. Uh, frame investigation. Uh, yeah, it is. Sure. Um, can you come back in tomorrow? Two o'clock. That'll, that'll be great. Okay, I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Well, uh, Chadwell was very good for me. I actually took Gregory down to the pond, that same swimming hole that I've had nightmares about all these years. And I saw my son laughing and splashing around in that water, and pretty soon I was in there laughing and splashing around with him. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So do you feel like this rape never happened? Or... No, no. Of course it happened. And it messed up my life for a lot of years. But now, instead of being this big, it's just in its place. It's, it's like Dr. Lyon said. Now, I'm in control of the memory, not the other way around. It's like I can finally breathe. It is like it's over. Oh, that's so great. My only regret is that I wish I'd been here. I'd been able to be here for you, for John. I'm sorry about the miscarriage. Yeah, well, something I haven't been through before. But it still hurts. Yeah. Yeah, it hurts a lot. It's like, um... It's like I'm mourning for a child that I loved but never knew. Well, do you and Cass think maybe you'll give this thing a try again? Mm -hmm. You know? We need to take some time. And talk about all the things we didn't talk about this time. And, uh, well... Cass is way too busy for that right now. Oh, yeah, I... I heard about the lawsuit. Is... Is John really upset? Well, I'm more upset with him. He didn't even tell me about it. He said he didn't want to worry me while I was in Oklahoma. Are you okay with this? Oh, honey, I think it's a tragedy that this child died. Oh, so do I. So... You can understand why Cass feels so strongly about the case. Y yes. Look, if your husband has to take my husband to court, then we we'll just work it out. We'll find a way around it. Charlene, I am so glad you feel that way because I have to stand behind Cass. Look, don't worry about it. I I'm not going to let this come between us. Are we going to have a family when this is over? 
Losing a patient is always tough for a seven-year-old boy, and I've got a son that's a year younger than that. And we can't put that in a deposition, John. Cass Winthrop would nail you with it. I know. Cass is going to make things as difficult as he possibly can. That's why we've got to be prepared. Now, tell me what kind of parent Lori Michaels was. Oh, come on, Tim. Don't you think that woman's had a hard enough time as it is? But do you want to win this case or not? Okay, sir. I can give you something to relieve the pain and the swelling. But I want you to promise me you'll see Ms. Ortiz in social work. And that you'll start going to AA. I, I would rather have one-on-one -on -one therapy with you, baby. <laughs> Mr. Sandinsky, listen. If your liver gets worse, you could hemorrhage and die. Now, I don't want to lose my favorite patient. Promise me you'll go on the wagon. Okay. Well, the Nobel Prize in Medicine goes to... Oh, uh, the former Dr. Evans? We're going to get through this. You been served your papers yet? The papers my dog just ate? We'll meet tomorrow morning with Tim Phillips, the hospital counsel. And be prepared to answer in minute detail any questions about what happened the day Ben Michaels died. But we already filled out reports. Is this really necessary? Yes, it is. I don't want you to forget anything, no matter how insignificant, that could complicate this case, okay? Now spend the rest of your day thinking it over in your head. Can we practice medicine while we think it over in our heads? Sure. I want you to stay in shape in case we lose this one and you have to practice out of state. Is that it? I have work to do. Hey, Morgan, is she dealing with this? She's upset. Well, we all are. Tell her not to freak out. Thanks. Can I ask you a question? Sure. I mean, is this standard procedure, this lawsuit, the fact that every doctor who ever treated Ben Michaels is being sued? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. You might want to put that on your list of questions for counsel. Or I could ask my brother, the lawyer. Hey, I set up a conference with the hospital personnel for tomorrow. Now, today didn't work for them. Besides, the papers were just served, so they need time to... Lori. Lori, we're still on schedule. Please try not to worry, all right? Everything is going to be fine, I promise you. Okay. Bye. Hey, kid. Do the whole thing all the way there. Good, good. Yeah, that's all. Officer Watts. Is this how you people always do things? Well, we try to, sir. Ah, you mean it takes that much effort to work so slowly? Well, as you can see, there's quite a bit of ground to cover, sir. Yeah. You want to show me where that button was found? The jacket button? What do you think? Right. Right. Well, we found a left of the tracks right about here. Uh-huh. Okay, what about the lab results? Huh? Any uh, clues as to what kind of a coat it was, the point of manufacturer, the uh, place of purchase, anything? Huh? Was there a thread or even a fiber to test? We're working on that report, sir. Now, why doesn't that surprise me? Well, as from what I understand, what? sir, it's a very common jacket button. So. Ah, I see. Watts, can you keep a secret? Come here. Yes, I can. I don't care if that button decorates the sleeve of every man on the planet Earth. This button is different. Do you know why? This button is different because of the Academy. We call this button evidence. Now, does that ring any bells? Yes, it does, sir. Excuse me. Good. Yeah, you're excused. Look, man, you're taillights. <laughs> What'd you call me? What, you heard me? What, are you deaf? You're standing on the side of a police investigation. Oh, no kidding. No, no kidding. And, and, and while we're at this, why don't you tell me what you were doing in Ryan Harrison's office? Lieutenant. No, 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 Josie. Forget this. I'm talking to Bozo here, okay? Oh. Before I bounce your butt, why don't you go ahead and tell me who the hell you think you are? I am your worst nightmare. Lieutenant, uh, this is Captain McNamara, our new boss. Gabe McNamara. I'm heading the task force investigating Ryan Harrison's shooting. Until further notice, I'm taking over control of 
Captain Harrison's department. Understood. Yes, sir. Uh, now, would yes. you like to tell me when are you going to find out who killed Ryan Harrison? Um, excuse me, sir, would you? Just, could we have a word in private? Thank you. The man standing behind you, that's uh, Carl Hutchins. That's Captain Harrison's father. And the woman standing next to him is Rachel Corey, his wife. And my suggestion would be that we have a little respect in their presence. Uh, tell me something. Is this a police investigation or an encounter group? Captain Harrison, sir, is like family to all of us. I'll handle this. This is Hutchins. Yes. Captain McNamara, I need to ask a few questions, ma'am. My wife has already gone through this with the capable Lieutenant Sinclair. All the more reason. I, I'm afraid I really don't remember anything from that night. Ah, uh, sure you do. You just need a little push. A push? Push gently, Captain. I plan to, sir. Mrs. Hutchins, do you remember how you got on the lighting tower? I don't. I... Ah. Were you in front of or behind just in Kirkland? I don't remember, Captain. I just said I... I see. Do you remember where Ryan Harrison was standing? Was I don't remember anything you? from that evening. I'm terribly sorry. I would very much like to help. I thought it would help me to come here, but I don't remember anything. There's nothing very original in your questions, Captain. Thanks for the good tea. Any time. Yeah. Let's get out of here. I'm Let's sorry to go. put you through this. No, oh, that's all right. Boss? Yeah, well, I got another word for him. Felicia. John. I, um, I was just writing Lorna a note when she left this. Um, I'll make sure that she gets it. I heard about the lawsuit, John. Um, maybe we could sit down. I don't think it would be a good idea if we... If this is about last night, uh... As far as I'm concerned, that never happened. Except it did happen. And I really think it'd be a good idea. Johnny, I got a renal puncture in two, and I need you. Um, don't go anywhere. I'll find you. Well, it's kind of chilly in here, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You heard about the lawsuit, oh, didn't yeah. you? Mm. So, what, are you angry, too? Angry? No. Confused? Very. I mean, how can you bring a lawsuit against John Hudson and your own brother? It's not personal. Oh, come on, Kat. Of course it's personal. It's John and Morgan. All I can think about is the little boy who died for no reason at all. Honey, I know how tragic. What is this about? Is this about Frankie's miscarriage? Is that it? It happened at the same time, and yes, it made me empathize with Lori, but I'm going with my instinct. In my heart, I know I'm doing the right thing. No, no, the right thing would be to get her a new lawyer. That's the right thing. Look, I made her a promise. Yeah. I can't bail out on her now. She's a single mother. She has no money. She has no family. She's got nothing. Nobody. Look, I know I've become the bad guy for a lot of people around here, but I'm committed to this. Even if it means you could lose everything? Not to mention John or Morgan. I understand the implications, but the cause is greater to me. Greater than the people that you love the most, Cass? I know it's going to be rough. That's why I'm here, to see if I still have a brother. So I get a call from this guy who I am so hot for. And he's talking about his motorcycle. But my problem is, do I wear the ripped jeans or this little tight black leather biker shorts because I hear it's easy to burn your legs on the exhaust pipe, you know. Mm. And uh, who are you going on this motorcycle ride with, Sam? Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. I didn't tell you. Uh, no. Oh, I guess I thought you knew. I mean, he's been promising me for weeks and finally he called. So that's why you're all freaked out because you don't know what to wear. Well, from over here, it looks like you're freaked out. I mean, it's not like a date or anything. I mean, not like a date date. It's 
to ride on his bike. No big whoop. You know, you're right. And I think that you should go with the jeans. I mean, the baggier, the better. Big pants. Big. Hey, guys. Hey, hey. Thomas. How you doing? Hey. Hey, do you have a sec? Yeah. So, how'd it go after I left? Oh, with Rachel? Yeah. Oh, it was, it was cool. Oh, she didn't hassle you? Nah. What was she gonna do, ground me? Yeah, she seemed like she was pretty mad. No. She'll get over it. I don't really care what she thinks. I mean, I'm my own person. It's my life, right? Don't worry about my grandmother. Okay. Well, if you're gonna do your own thing, how about after my shift, we can go out to the lake and we can have a little moonlight picnic. Sounds great. So listen, I'll pick up Louisa, and you can meet me at the farm, and then we'll head out. Okay. Good? Bye. Oh. You don't have poli side this afternoon, do you? Oh, right. Um, actually, come to think of it, William's, uh, he had a conference he had to run to, like, last minute, so we're rescheduling the class till, I think, the end of the semester. So, I'm free, yeah. Cool. I'll see you. Bye. 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 That's funny. Uh, Shelly didn't mention that William's canceled class. So she'll have to take notes for me. I have much better things to do than sit in a boring lecture hall all afternoon, Pam. Oh, yeah, like what? I have dates, too. Thank you. I think it's time for you to rest. Do you feel like resting? No. No, not really. I feel like throwing things. Be my guest. There are all sorts of breakable things in this house. Oh, my head hurts. Come here. How are you feeling? Angry. Yes, I can tell. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's all right. You know, when Matt died, I remember feeling that kind of anger and such incredible loneliness. But it was the anger that helped me survive. Yes, I'm well acquainted with anger. And the rage in me will sustain me. Because without it, I'm empty. Numb. Yes, I remember those feelings too. But you will through this, darling. We'll get through this together. Ryan Harrison, ballistics, forensics, autopsy, adjusting Kirkland's psychological profile. I want those reports done. I want them done right on my desk, ASAP. Oh, and by the way, when I say ASAP, I really have my heart set on it. What are you standing around for? Move! Whoa. He's what you call boy wonder. Oh, is that what they call it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard he was a real whiz kid. He skipped a bunch of grades, out of college early. He was way ahead of the game, right through law school. Oh, law school. He's a lawyer. That explains everything. I hear he's got a nickname. Oh, yeah? Morales, you get your, your finger on the pulse? Go ahead, spill it. It's early. Because he's like the early bird. <laughs> <laughs> early, huh? <laughs> early. Here's your report, early. <laughs> uh, here you go. Uh, ASAP, just like you like it, early. <laughs> it would be a real mistake. <clears throat> it would be a real big mistake to ever, ever call me that again. The name is Captain McNamara. It's too bad you people don't have any experience working in a by-the-book on-time department. But you're going to learn, and you're going to learn fast. Now, do any of you have any problems with that? No, no, no sir. No, sir. Good. No, Ryan Harrison. I'm sorry I wasn't able to help the police more. It's their job to find the answers, not yours. You don't want me to remember what happened that night, do you? Why do you say that? 
You're right. It's a blessing to be blank. And not to have whatever happened that night, images, those images running around in my head. Yes. Yes, it is a blessing. And it's an image I can't rid myself of. Then I must remember what happened. Oh, yes. Oh, we'll never get any peace. Yes, I want you to remember. I want you to be able to tell me all about the last time you saw my son alive. Lieutenant, Justin Kirkland, psychological profile. Ryan Harrison, ballistics, forensics, autopsy. I'm impressed. Real impressed. Good work. And uh, ASAP, too. Just the way Early likes it. <laughs> Gary. <laughs> No, I'm not kidding. It's me. Yeah. Just got into town a couple of days ago. Yeah, I'd like that. It'd be great to see you too again, you old pal, you. Okay. There you are. I wanted to talk to you at the hospital. I thought we should talk in private. Okay, let me have it. Don't think that this lawsuit <clears throat> isn't affecting our relationship. It is. I asked you for your blessing and you gave it to me. Yeah, that felt like a long time ago. I, I didn't know how this would feel. I'm sorry. Sorry enough to make it better? I wish I could. Take Courtney's name off the lawsuit. I can't do that. I'm asking you to try. If something's going on between you and Courtney, hey, that's hey, great. Hey, it's kid. not like that. I'm just asking you as a favor. Just like you asked me for my blessing before you decided to take this case. The issue here is greater than the individual careers of the doctors involved. No, no, it's not. And how dare you say that to me? The life and death argument is great in theory, but the real deal is going to destroy Courtney Evans. A woman who deserves her career, a woman who is very much alive. You can't bring Benjamin Michaels back. Taking down Courtney Evans is not going to do that. Cass. I don't even think it's going to feel very good. I'm sorry, kid. But I can't. It's too late now. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's way too late. What are you still doing here? Oh, Luna, I... Well, I gave your brioche and a little note that I wrote you to John. I just want to make sure you got it, that's all. Oh, that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll get something to eat on my own. I'll be fine. Well, to get through this lawsuit, you're going to need all the pastry and all the support you can get. I, I just want you to know that I'm here for you, all right, honey? I know, Mother. Thank you. I want to find John. I want to tell him the same thing. Don't bother. Reed, the Providence Place Mall is under discussion at the State House, and last night the debate was heated. What happens today when former Governor Sunland speaks out? We'll have the latest on News Channel 10.